This year, as gigs are canceled and stages go dark, it can feel hopeless. Don't let the lights go out on you or your bandmates. Your union brothers and sisters are here for you. The AFM is fighting to get members help with unemployment assistance. We're working in D.C. to help protect working people. And we're standing up to get musicians back performing safely. And most importantly, we want you to be healthy both physically and mentally. Please reach out and check in on your friends. It's okay to ask if they're okay, and it's okay to not be okay. We will return again when the curtains call. Until then, stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay positive. Find more resources and assistance at afm.org slash help. And remember, together we are stronger. 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 Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and whenever and wherever you're watching us from, welcome to another episode of Conical Supremacy. My name is John Noreko, and of course, it ain't the show without my esteemed colleague and co-host, Mr. Doug Tornquist. Hey, Doug. <laughs> John, John, you flatter me. It's good to see you. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing actually pretty, really good, man. Um, pretty, really good. Yeah, that made sense. Uh, <laughs> um Living the California promise today. It's beautiful outside, uh, a little bit of wind. I mean, I, I got no complaints, man. How about you? You know, it's it just gets better every day. That's all I have to say. And uh, well, um, is that it's because good. You're, is that because you're not teaching right now? No, I love to, <laughs> I love teaching, and you know that. I know you um, do, man. <laughs> but no, having a little time, a, a little downtime, is always nice. It is good. It is good to recharge. You know, uh, I, I have a friend <clears throat> who has a guru and that man tells her that um, this, the basis of all that rest is the basis of all activity. So rest is so important and we don't, we don't give we don't let ourselves do that. And this is a time of year and maybe even on this weekend when we give ourselves just a little bit of, uh, you know what, I, th I think that's, you know, um, you and I play so much all the time. And, and I feel guilty about sometimes just sitting on the couch and, and, and doing that instead of having the horn in my face or working on something. And, and I think that's a truism, man. And, and as we get older, we start looking at that kind of thing going, you know what, shut up, sit on a couch or lay down and don't feel bad about it. It's, it's necessary, but, but you remember in college, they said, you know, while you're resting, Someone is practicing and they're practicing your part. You know, they taught us to feel guilty about taking any time off and yeah, well, it's, it, it's necessary. Yeah. I, I think sometimes, you know, that, that whole music thing is, is very Jewish and Catholic where the guilt is built in. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, hey, you know, last week we did the us show and, and I had a really great time, but you know, because we've got so much stuff out there, you and I, um, we didn't get to all of it. And and I really wanted to play um, this one that we kind of skipped over. And I would love for you to give us just a little bit of background. I mean, you were working with John Lithgow on this. And well, I, ish, right? Yeah, I, I didn't know that. This was way back in 2006 or something. And, you know, I just got a call for a session. And they said, you know, come on down to Henson, which is, okay, it's just, it's right here in Hollywood, you know, La Brea and Melrose. And Henson is, you know, you drive by and you're like, what is that? It looks like this little Swiss village. Well, okay, it was built by Charlie Chaplin. So it was, <laughs> it was Charlie Chaplin's movie studio. Then, you know, this um, unknown trumpet player named Herb Alpert bought it. Yeah, right. And it was, it was A&M Records, okay? So anyway, there's a lot of history there going back 100 years. You know, and you walk in and you walk into Studio D, which is where, I mean, you know. It's the big room, right, man? It's the big room. You and know, that's, I've that's, been in there. I've been in there a couple of times and holy crap, is that well, a good time? Well, it is. And that's that's where the Carpenters recorded, you know. I know. Was, I mean, so so anyway, I sat down, you know, and I said, well, this is the small group today. And then they said, well, you know, we're only going to do one song. You can sit over there. And then I saw on the stand, it was this chart called I'm a Manatee. And I thought, well, that's that's a new one. Cause you know, usually with tuba, you know, when there's a when you're playing for the movies, you look up and whenever there's a tuba solo, it's either a dinosaur or a rather large human being or 
you know, something like that. And I had not seen a manatee. So that's one for the list of representative, you know, creatures. <laughs> but, but the craziest thing was that I walked in there and here's John Lithgow. Right. And he walks up to me. He's like, hi, Doug. And I'm like, I don't know John Lithgow. But he, <laughs> he acted like he knew me, you know, I guess they told him that, but, and then I didn't realize there's this big tuba solo in I'm a manatee. And I mean, we did, I did a lot of things with John Lithgow. He did this thing. It was introducing young people to the instruments. It was called Farkle McBride. And he would put an orchestra on stage. I mean, John Lithgow has done everything. You know, I, I knew him as the nurse in the world, according to Garp. Remember he did one, that of my, movie? one of my favorite films, actually. I, right. I, and yeah. one of my favorite books. Yeah. And then most recently you saw him as Winston Churchill in the crown. I know. And, and, yeah. awesome. and then he had this musical career. I mean, there's nothing that man can't do. You know, no. and he's he's so good at everything. Anyway, that's the story. You know, he put out a children's book called I'm a Manatee. And there's a song that goes along with it. And somebody, oh, it was Bill Elliott who arranged was this. Was it really Bill Elliott? Yeah, yes. yes. Well, I, I saw this and, and it's just something everybody's got to see because I think this is just awesome. It's just so much fun. So, uh, hey, Queen, can we throw up I'm a Manatee? Here's Doug. From time to time I dream that I'm a manatee Undulating underneath the sea Unshackled by the chains of idle vanity A modest manatee, that's me I look just like a chubby brown bananatee As I nose along the cozy ocean floor Immune from human folly and inanity That's why a manatee is such a happy herbivore. I'm a manatee, I'm a manatee. I'm every bit as wrinkled as my granity. No difference between my face and vanity. A noble manatee, that's me. With the dietary habits of a manatee, I never fail to lick my platter clean I sprinkle seaweed on my raisin branity The perfect manatee cuisine With my wit, sophistication and urbanity I dignify my watery domain No one near will ever hear me use profanity Because a manatee has his image to maintain I'm a manatee I'm a manatee I keep my reputation spick and spanity No difference between my face and vanity A stately manatee, that's me Encumbered by my lumbering giganity I'm thought to be an ocean-going brute The least appealing creature on the planet But to a manatee, I'm cute I prefer my world of silence and of sanity But my underwater friends don't all agree For whenever I am dreaming I'm a manatee Somewhere a manatee is dreaming that he's me I'm a manatee, I'm a manatee Outside the fold of boring old humanity No difference between my face and vanity I'm a roly-poly, jelly-roly, sugar-boly, heart and soul manatee. But that's a me. All right. So, awesome. It's <laughs> just great, man. I just love that stuff. I just, I really do, man. Well, that and that that is the sound of the Yamaha A22. It is in in, uh, in Studio D at Henson. Yeah, that's just great. Hey, um, if you don't mind, um, I was lucky enough um, this week. Um, I got to do one of those MPTF streaming concerts this week uh, with my group, and um, I got a big shout out to Local Seven for uh, getting this going on. They're they're producing seven of those over um, the month of June into July. And um, they've also produced a bunch. Actually, you did one 
up at the uh, at the Muckenthaler earlier yes. this year, and mm -hmm. I, I I got to hand it to the MPTF uh, about working this thing out and and getting some really great music out there. Um, we had we had quite a few views, and I was really happy about it, uh, mostly because of conical supremacy and the two bot thing and everything. But um, we hadn't pl played together for six months, and um, as a band and. And this really turned out well. Um, we got the most comments on this particular tune, and and I, I kind of like to throw it up. It ended up this this has been cut down. It ended up being like a thirteen minute tune. And for those of you out there who haven't heard the group, um, usually I have to cut stuff down for this group because everybody takes a solo. We're doing all kinds of stuff and blah blah blah, and improvising the whole way through and everything. And it ends up being like eight to twelve minutes sometimes. And you know, for those of you out there who are counting rest, that's eight, that's usually 11 minutes on my face. <laughs> so uh, this particular one was about 40 minutes in and I got to apologize because I scuffed a couple of ones, but the horn had been on my face for a solid 45 minutes. So uh, anyway, so um, one of my favorite tunes, and this is actually uh, from Mexico, it's called Besame Mucho.
You know what? We got the one and only Julian Dixon with us today, man. And and hey, man, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and joining us today. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure and honor. I, uh, I, as I was telling Doug earlier, I throw your podcast to my students. Hey, there's wonderful people showing up here. Check it out. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of the the supremacy. Uh, <laughs> hey man it ain't cool unless it's low and conical bro that's the way it is Conical. <laughs> we, yes, we, it is. we got our sound and it's a good one man uh, so um i guess let's start at the, at the front julian if you don't mind man um yeah. you've you've been able to play with with a number of different orchestras throughout your career and um i don't know was sac state your first teaching gig or what um, they, basically, uh, yeah, first teaching gig, well, you've got to count some summers. I was uh, working at in Boston University, mm -hmm. uh, Tanglewood Institute. I, was, I went out there to study, finish my undergrad and do graduate work out there and work a shadow with the Empire Brass Quintet mm -hmm. Seminar. So I'm, I'm coming out of school, Sam Palapian. So I did a lot of uh, coaching during the summers, you know, our, our Atlantic Brass Quintet. You know, we're following, we were the B team. We pretty much ran the program while the Empire <laughs> Brett would drop in, do their, their show time. And we, you know, we- And get, and get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, and in, in doing the quintet thing, you know, it's just, when you get out there, there's always an educational component. You know, you're doing school concerts. Um, so, and, you know, promoting our instruments and whatnot. But San Francisco, uh, Sacramento State, is, yeah, it's the one gig I landed and, and been with. Um, I'm kind of fortunate that I have like a whole smorgasbord of stuff oh, yeah. that I'm oh, yeah. able to maintain right now. Which I think is, is, is kind of cool at, at, at this point, right, man? Because it all, it's not like you're just sitting around, you're busy, right? And, and busy is good. Yeah, oh, um, busy that I'm, I'm still a single man here. <laughs> 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 um, you know, it's it's been great because yeah, I've been you know I did a tour scene coming through college with quintets. You know, um, I, I you know when I, I I grew up in San Francisco, okay. and really my first teaching, I mean my lessons were with Floyd Cooley. Right. San so, so so speaking about Floyd, right? So would you yeah. mind would you mind going through, uh, for lack of a better term, your pedigree as far as who who you got to study with and. Uh, yeah. And how and how you got to this place? I mean, first of all, Floyd, kudos to you, man, because that must have been really cool. Cooley, <laughs> um, pun intended. Um, it, it all started with Marshall Feeling. Uh, I mean, uh, Marshall Smith. Uh, my sax, he was a sax teacher in the junior high school band. No shit. He said, "Joel, uh, who wants to try the tuba?" And uh, you know, sitting over there in the corner, and I thought that's where I started. So by the time I got to the college um actually floyd was my first teacher um and i was fortunate enough to be the first tuba in the san francisco symphony youth orchestra and when it because they built the davies symphony hall you know they left the war memorial opera house right right finally and uh 
so I was getting coaching from the brass section from the San Francisco Symphony. And Floyd kind of turned me on there. And I got those first, you know, inaugural years. We broke in the hall. Uh, as I said, we broke in the musician's lounge as kids before it became off limits. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Floyd, uh, he was my first teacher. And uh, it was a, an adjustment. And, uh, you know, we worked a year. And then Zachariah Spellman came in and Zach had worked with Floyd so he really um, established that the Northern California that Floyd sound really stuck yeah, in my absolutely. head absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah and then uh, you know I worked with Zachariah for for years and then I um, had a big break got my Tokyo Disneyland gig and um, was introduced introduced myself to Sam Palapian and we had it was a fun story but we connected in Japan um, and he said hey come out to Boston and steady. I said, hell yeah. Um, you know, Empire Brass, that's, I wanted to do that. And so, um, pretty much, you know, Sam Palafian worked with him much of the later years, you know, you know, bits and pieces of, you know, lessons here at conferences, but pretty much of, um, from Cooley, Zachariah Spellman, Sam Palafian, that's the, 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 the legacy, you know, actually I thought you should call this the program, the, the conical legacy, mm. you know, yeah. uh, all these folks that, that we uh well i mean we've we've had an ongoing we've had an ongoing joke about especially the guys here in la about how many guys study with tommy right i mean it oh, yeah. and, then, and then if it wasn't tommy it was jim and if it wasn't jim it was doug yeah. and if it wasn't doug it was norm and if it wasn't them it was me yeah. and then it was like you know blah, blah we got this whole thing going on man it's just ridiculous uh yeah i was northern california those are southern cal yeah yeah i know i'm just saying it's just like it, it, it's funny how how, how the pedigree becomes territorial. Yeah, but but in our younger years, uh, we were all over the place looking for that right guy. And, and I think cool. everybody out there should uh, who's watching today, especially uh, those at VTech, if they're, they're, they're tuning in today, oh, yeah. it's not, you gotta find the right guy who, who speaks to you and, and speaks your language and, and, and lets you not only be you, but find that music that's in you. And, and I think, Doug, um, that, I think that's one of your th great things, uh, especially in the USC studio, is that uh, you let your students find out what they're doing, find that music. Well, this past year, especially. Oh, absolutely, um, man. I well, mean, there were, there were no, no, no borders in the world and they did such astonishing things. But, um, yeah. but I've, I have some questions for Julian. Julian, when were you in Japan? Oh, uh, 1984. For the we played the first anniversary. Uh, I I remember I was like a junior in college. And they're, they're looking for the Jamaican police band. Okay. Yeah, man. And, and, I, and I auditioned for Stan Freeze. I, I jumped on a bus, and of course, then of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I went in in the morning, and, and at the end of the day, before I could get on the bus back, he says, "I want you to go." Um, do this gig and I was like oh my gosh I mean I have to withdraw from school what is this and, uh -huh. um, and, and it's funny at the time I, my, I had um, Marriott's Great America I just was starting a quintet strolling band at Marriott's Great America in Santa Clara yeah. so I was like oh Disneyland same, same difference but it was like six months in 1984 um, the second half of the year you know, we, you, you, know you, you gotta do the, um, the visa and uh, it was great. I was the youngest. I, I, I really broke, with, broke in uh, to the pro professional world. Like, I'm doing it. Uh, it was in intense, you know, the heat, the weather, no shade. But by the end of that gig, it was like, yeah, we're doing this. And what was pretty amazing about the, the gig, um, I had, before I got there, I went to Empire Brass concert. And, and every student out there, go and introduce yourself to, to the artist after backstage or whatever, I introduced myself to Sam Palapian, uh, say, Hey, I love your sound. I want to do what you do, you know, and, you know, and he seemed to remember my face. And so I heard they're touring through Tokyo. I saw a poster up there and it's like, well, wait a second, this is all in Japanese, but that's the empire brass. I knew enough. And I caught the concert and, um, the trombonist with him at the time was Larry Isaacson. And he was my coach during the San Francisco Youth Symphony for a couple of years. And he just left playing second trombone with the symphony. So I'm sitting there, uh, go to the concert, and here's this kid, um, 
three thousand Japanese folks, you know, it was one little, you know, black kid and an American kid, and they knew me. And um, oh, we lost you for a second. Hang oops. on, man. Oh, no, yeah, there we go. I'm good. Okay, <laughs> I'm good. Uh, um, as on my end. Uh, and so they look out in the audience and say, I recognize you. And uh, Sam, you know, we connected. Sam um, connected me with the local tuba players in uh, Japan doing the shows, uh, the, the, the orchestras, and had like little, um, for a few, um, the few days he was in town, uh, you know, Kubo was doing all the gigs. And so it's like I got immersed into this world, a, a professional world, the professionals checking out the shows in my off time. And um, so after Sam left, he said, um, Kubo was in town. He says, oh, Howard Johnson's coming into town. Let's, let's go and go oh, hang out and have some clothes. I know. I, I, it's a big loss, man. Um, so I, I'm, like, I'm still a kid, you know, barely 20. And I meet Kubo and I meet Howard Johnson to go hang out. All the clubs were closed. It was an off day. But, you know, sitting there, got to hang out with Howard and meet him and meet the so it's like I got all of a sudden networked to this whole world. And uh, Sam said, you know, come out to Boston. And uh, yeah, and it's, it was this great timing before he, he left, you know, before the, em the empire imploded or, <laughs> you know. Um, no, that's, a, that's a good word. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the, it, uh, fine, finally dissolved. But the, and the, and the Atlantic Rescue we were coming up in their footsteps. So um, you know we you know they hooked us up. We, we got <laughs> Columbia Arts Management toured wow. um, a community concert circuit. You know we had like 120 concerts our first debut season. Yep. You know, and it was just I, like I did that. I did that. I did that circuit, Julian, for 23 years. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> and you're here to tell us about it. Yeah, and Dis and Disney on top of that because Stan Freeze yeah. hired me in '85. <laughs> you know, and I'm I'm, I'm uh, continuing the legacy that uh, one of my students, uh, Robert Murray. I don't know if you come across Robert Murray. He's down there uh, now. Actually, okay. actually, Robert's a very good friend of mine. Yeah, he lives, so, he lives he lives three miles from my house. So he came <laughs> through. Yeah, I, I I got to whip him into shape. Yeah, I, you did I, you did I, a good I, job, bro. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and so you know, we pass we pass it on, you know, and wow. it's, it's it's great. So I remember the Atlantic Brass Quintet. I mean, you people were a huge deal. Absolutely. And, and you were doing all that stuff. I mean, I'm I'm affiliated with BUTI. I'm on the the, the National Advisory Council, and uh, you know they they don't have a program like that. I mean, I attended I attended the Empire Brass Quintet seminar in 1979, which might have been the first year they had it. And, uh, you know, it was such an incredible program. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I went out there in 85. By the time I transferred out, um, it, you know, I was kind of a junior, senior thing. But the summers um, were so, what I loved about BUTI is like we, we were coaching the student quintet, doing our first love, our uh, Atlantic. We got to do, re read and rehearse everything. And then during our downtime, I wasn't I was free enough not being part of TMC, but I got to go to all the the rehearsals. You know, I got to see Leonard Bernstein the last two summers, and and sit in the audience and watch him work uh, the Fellowship Orchestra. Got to hang out at the Hall School party. You know, I got to you know see all the great um, Boston Symphony the conductors come up there. Um, I got to see the Battle of Canadian Brass versus the Empire Brass. You know, they shared the stage. I mean, it was like a um, the Boston University Tanglewood, the Tanglewood scene is so special. I kind of like, how do I convey that wonderful talent to, you know, bring that out West? Now, where do kids go for, for that today? The very few places where you got all this rich talent, you know, and, and seeing all these greats. And we're kind of, I was coming out kind of on the, uh, I guess the back end of a, a era. Uh, well, where I, I think... Exploded. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right on that, man, because, um, you know, I came, uh, you and I are, are probably really close in age and, and Doug's, Doug's right in there too. And I, I think all of us uh, came in and were able to do that stuff because that whole live thing, that whole brass thing was still just really cool and, 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 and marketable, I think was the really great yeah. thing. And, and the other thing was too, um, you were in it because it was worth it. 
as opposed to that. I think that has changed a little bit because of our, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, especially with the younger crowd. Now they're, they're just not, they want to do a bunch of different stuff. And as, as they should, um, you know, cause that's the world we live in now is difference and, yeah. and, and that type of thing. Hey man, um, just to, I really want to throw this up right now. And, and this is a, a Bach piece that you guys did for a holiday concert. And the reason why I picked this Bach piece was that it wasn't holiday music thing, but um, what a great brass ensemble. And, and, and this is at Sac State where you're teaching now, correct? Yeah. 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 Okay, uh -huh. You want, you want to set this up for us at all, man? Yeah. Um, so, um, if this is from last year, this is during, believe it or not, um, during COVID. We were able to rehearse in person, keep it limited, um, we, in the garage across the street, the parking garage. And we, the kids, it's like the one outlet, outlet to come in person. We got a, you know, a, a free pass to do in person. And um, the kids just ate it up, uh, it, you know, like a like eight piece um, arrangement. Um, one and we'll come back to this but I also did the down in the valley festival of tuba so we kind of broke that in but this was kind of the stuff we wanted to do give the kids the experience of large ensemble playing yeah so and, quinn, quinn can we throw that up there right now man please so and, and this is well, really well produced i believe and um so everybody check this out So that wasn't that wasn't the same setup, right, bro? <laughs> no, it wasn't. this is what threw me up because I saw early on you saw me conducting an ensemble. I think we did a box thing. This what we just heard was uh, the Sacramento Philharmonic and Opera, our brass section. Right. And that's our first time getting back together, and it's like, hey, we got to do. Uh, how do we just to get out there again? 
And uh, that was um, in the theater in Vallejo. Uh, that we, we, we put a whole series of, that's part of a Christmas concert back in December, mm-hmm. late in December. Mm-hmm. And funny thing was, I bought an Eastman tuba, four-quarter tuba, that horn. I was going to ask you, is that, was that an Eastman four-quarter? Yeah. Oh, no, six-quarter. Six quarter. Oh, the six-quarter, six okay. Quarter. Six, six-quarter. The day I bought it, I thought, okay, great. I want to bring in a bigger horn to the Philharmonic, an opera, stage, and break it in. But we were lined up to do the um, Sassan Oregon Symphony, and it got canceled. That the very day, I was going to try it. So... That, this recording is the first time I played it with the brass section and like getting a feel for it. So I played it a little bit more since then. <laughs> and I think I sent you nothing, another one that didn't quite, um, we had technical issues, but the Russian uh, orchestra where it really worked, it settled in nicely with the, with the band, um, you know, by the Russian circus. Uh, There's a, a recording that we have going out there as we speak this week. We did the whole digital series. Uh, oh, cool. The, the record, oh. Yeah. Yeah. We did the brass section and the piece, you know, the strings did their thing, the woodwind. They pieced it into like five series of concerts. And uh, this one featured us. Um, yeah. Second Mount Philharmonic Opera, uh, you know, we're, it's, it grew out of the San Francisco, I mean, the Sacramento Symphony days when it was like a part time mm-hmm. orchestra. I mean, uh, not part time, most of us whole time, 23, 26 weeks, you know, season and full season. Then it folded. Um, before I got there, I think like the early, mid, mid nineties, uh, early nineties. By the time I came back up, uh, it was the film, it was just a Philharmonic and then we later merged with the opera. So it's, uh, it's still going pretty steady and we're growing. Uh, we've got a new hall being built for us downtown, well renovated. Uh, it's happening, it's starting to happen up here. So how many, how many, weeks, yeah. how many weeks seasons is that for you, Julian? Oh, uh, it's, you know, we're doing it's just per service orchestra. Um, okay, cool. About, about nothing, nine. Hey, man, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh no, yeah. <clears throat> if you, no. We, oh, we're, we're chomping at the bit, you know, for when the world says, "Oh, we got to have music." <laughs> you know, the importance of having music, and uh, you know, I think COVID coming out, of COVID, we'll see like how people say, "Yeah, we know what we're missing now." <laughs> you know. Well, you know, Julian, Julian, and I were talking before this and um you've had such a fascinating career julian i mean you you did everything right and you were in all these great groups and then at some point you took a rather drastic left turn we were talking about that earlier yeah um so after i i left the, um i transferred out to boston university i was out there about 10 and a half years and you know hitting the brass quintets and doing the Shrine Klezmer Orchestra. I was in like two, three different quintets, you know, um, Cantabrigia and, uh, um, you know, uh, the Boston, I was sitting and sat with the Boston Brass, you know, guys. Mm-hmm. I was doing it, um, the, some, sitting in these jazz groups. I was hitting it, hitting it, and all of a sudden, um, my playing just fell apart. It's like, oh, why am I having difficulty doing, doing some simple articulations and, uh, and I didn't know what was happening. Uh, all I know is like I got into a, uh, a tour with our Klezmer band. We were in Miami doing shows and I needed the, the pianos in the, uh, uh, luckily we had a piano, keyboard and um, rhythm section to help carry the show where I just couldn't, couldn't articulate. And uh, as I later learned, I have a task specific embouchure um, focal dystonia you know, of the embouchure. Oh, man. And I hard stop. And in fact, today I say, as we're going through COVID, I said, I already had my COVID time. <laughs> no, had sh- no way. No shit, man. I, oh, oh, overnight, I couldn't play. Had gigs lined up. Had to, had to cut them loose. Uh, isolated because, you know, depressed and anxious. Like, where where do I go? What do I do with this? You know, mm-hmm. uh, not making money. You know, I, all my family were out in the um, West Coast just me on the east coast you know and and um so basically you know for survival i i basically um found myself part of the a wireless industry um at boston's communication group uh, learning about cell phones you know and paging and at the at the front lines to the point where like five years later 
I can honestly say I became a part of the, the merger that founded Verizon Wireless. I was doing uh, customer, I was doing call center, um, supervising call centers, but then I transferred over um, from AirTouch paging to, Air, um, to um, AirTouch Cellular, and the AirTouch Cellular merged and became Verizon Wireless. And so I was doing uh, national accounts, working with Fortune 50 companies, doing consolidated billing and ins and outs of cellular. I wish I had bought more stock. <laughs> <laughs> you know but you know it was a world of i got to get seven years of the corporate world and and then as i got settled back um getting back into playing like i took five years came back home uh during so, the merger so, so julian julian oh look who's here ah, <laughs> oh we, my thought God. We, we thought you would, we would surprise you so <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you. Oh. I love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All so, right. Hey, hey, Julian. Julian. So, I, I've known. I, I'm up to 13 people I've known who've stopped playing because of focal dystonia. And yeah. what was your solution, bro? I mean, I th I think this is really valid and. And, yeah. and I think everybody out there should listen to this because yeah. this can happen. Yeah. And, and, and that's important my teaching. So uh, um, the biggest thing when I couldn't play is like, well, who am I? You know, why am I doing this? You know, why is I doing it? You know, because you, when you, you know, what you do kind of defines you. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of people. But I kind of flipped the other side. It's like, well, what brought me to music? You know, why am I doing music? You know, it's about creating, it's about connecting with people. You know, it's about, you know, sharing a voice and, and, and doing things positive. And so to kind of, um, you, and realizing the two is a vehicle, you know, making music is a vehicle for whatever you do. Uh, and so when it, if it's not happening, it's like, but you're still who you are, you know? So, uh, and then I started basically to get back after five years, you know, I did a little bit of spotty teaching, but to get back into it, kind of let, kind of forget the trying to take the burden of trying to make it the gig, try the burden of like, oh, I got to stay on top of it. I got to keep it going. And that intensity, I, I had to shed all that garbage of, you know, how we make this job successful. You know, you, you got to practice forever. You got to be on it, you know, kind of, so let down your guard. And I did let that bull crap, you know, just set that to aside and say, oh, I love the sound. I really love the sound. Oh, I was able to create something, a beautiful piece of music. Even early on, it's like, so just do a sit and do a whole note and find that sound, how connected to what I'm feeling in my soul. It's like, oh, you know, so, you know, people chant, you know, and, you know, meditate on, you know, that's what the sound does for me. And so I was like, oh, I got that one note today. Oh, I got a couple more notes today. And not beat myself up if I didn't get the, the note. Right, oh. right. You know, self-forgive self-forgiveness, man. Self-forgiving. And, and and so I eased into it and it was great. Zach introduced by this time I was playing a little bit more. Zach said, Hey, you should check out these um, Green Street Mortuary bands and be a part and play these Christian hymns and march around up and down the hills of Chinatown. Yeah. Low stress gig. Cool, fun people, you know. You know, you're out there just kind of like being a part of something greater, a, a, a culture of that a San Francisco iconic culture, and 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 being part of these people. You know, people past. You know, this, the uh, the Chinese you know, these Chinese funerals. We're you know we have people crying and realizing that we're playing a function. Music has a real function to real life stuff, and just like oh. And, you know, just but over time, my playing got stronger and stronger and more focused. And, and then I, I got back to the point where I could contribute and bring, still bring music. So, so Julian, you're, you're saying that a real, like the turning point in your healing was finding a new connection, your connection to music? Uh, basically, kind of a reconnection to myself. Wow. You know, there, there are times where you like, you, you know, yeah, you're man. trying to do these gigs, you're trying to do these gigs, I got to memorize these tunes, and, you know, I got to play my part, and I got to provide it to the group, you know, a role in the group, and realize, oh, wait a second, 
you know, we're put, we put out, you know, we do a lot of putting out, you know, and which is great because that's what tubas do. We, we put out, but we got to ground it in ourselves. You know, you know, you, you ground, you, you know, we're the basin and we, you know, in order to function and provide that role of, you know, whether we're playing a, a whole note, whether you know, there's a, a universe to me, there's a universe of things that can happen in a whole note, whether you're playing you know, the rhythm and keeping things mo- moving, but that has to come from, oh, this creation, you know. Did, did this cause, I mean, I'm just seeing like this is some kind of a tectonic shift in your relationship to yourself and your relationship to your colleagues and your students. I mean, it seems like it must have been kind of, a, if there is such a thing, a pleasant avalanche. Yeah. It, <laughs> and it, well said. And that, yeah. And, it, you know, I talked to a lot of my students. In fact, this past year or two have been the largest my studio has been, believe it or not, mm-hmm. during COVID. And everyone's, I have students going through crisis without the crisis. And it gives me the insight to say, hey, you know, this is, take it in stride. Um, there's ways of working through this. You know, there's ways of using your music to heal you, to grab you and center you. Um, and, you know, it's definitely, it's informed my teaching because, um, like you said, sometimes we overthink, you know, as we were saying earlier, and how to help um, young minds tone that down, to quiet, quiet that, and understand why the why we do this. Right. The why we do this. Um, well, well hey, Ju- hey, Julian, um, on that, man, I- I'd like to throw this up because sure. this, I-, I think what we're going to see right now is your solution, man. And, and-, and I got to hand it to you. What-, what a wonderful thing you're doing over at Sac State. So, Texar, do you mind throwing that up there? So check out Julian at work, man. This is this this is cool. Uh, Down in the Valley is a festival of tuba and euphonium. Uh, we put it together in 2006 to promote the tuba, to invite the community and share um, the, uh, the tuba st- uh, studio, bring them together, uh, showcase the tuba and promote the instrument, elevate um, the awareness of the instrument and show that it's instrument that you can play, it's very musical, um, bringing guest artists, world-renowned guest artists, international guest artists that help inspire us, inspire each other, inspire the young folks to pursue the instrument. We came together with this idea of, uh, to make a, a, a festival that would um, showcase the tuba and the euphonium as a solo instrument, as uh, something that uh, is a little bit more than what the average public thinks of tubas. So it began as uh, something that instead of working up a, a large solo piece, it would work up a small portion and we would share it with other people. We'd do master classes uh, where uh, hopefully some of the younger kids can learn how to like, maintain instruments, some basics. It's, uh, for me it's a lot of fun because this is obviously a tuba euphonium conference and I play trombone. So it's a bit of a different thing for me to do, but um, we have a lot of great musicians here and a lot of great music. This is a lot of fun today. I wrote the Down in the Valley Suite specifically for this festival, the one last year, I should say the one in 2008 and now it's become kind of like the signature piece that's played at these down in the valley festivals Cummings wrote for us is really a big deal because our instrument wasn't really uh, featured as a solo instrument for so long that we're relatively new. Um, so the fact that we have this new piece that's only here in Sacramento, um, we've played it at the international conferences in Cincinnati in 2008 and we've played other pieces by him but that have new literature is the most important thing to keep our art alive. So I mean I think that's you know awesome work there and um, 
kudos to you, Julian, for, 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 for really making things happen. And for those of you out there who just saw the screen come up before that vid, we have Mr. Zachariah Spellman with us sitting down on the, on the second half. Hello, Zachariah, man. Thanks so much for showing up after your gig. And uh, one of Julian's friends and mentors, and, and actually Zachariah was on our show a few weeks ago, and gosh, what a good time we had with you, man. And um, thank you so much for hipping us to Julian today. I really want to thank you. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. Believe me. I, I'm, I was so delighted when I heard that this was going to happen. And I, I just came from Fisherman's Wharf, which is where a lot of people are right now. They had a flyover of vintage airplanes. Uh, I was playing with an oboist and a keyboardist, and we were doing a lot of Americana, patriotic tunes, folk tunes, gospel tunes, ethnic tunes. It was just, it was just an amazing amalgamation of what is happening in San Francisco these days. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, I got to get home. I got to get home. I got I to see Julian. This is like this big moment. <laughs> ah, yeah. No, I'm so proud awesome. of Julian. I'm so proud of Julian. I'll never forget how he, Julian was my very first student in 1976 at the summer music workshop. And he, he, he was, um, he, he was so young and so small. The tuba was bigger than Julian. <laughs> he rolled it up and down the halls of Lowell high school on a skateboard and I knew I knew I was going to bond with this guy he, we, we've been <laughs> friends lifelong uh, friends ever since and hats off to you Julian yeah. you've done oh, it here you are yeah, yeah. it's it, oh. you know, it, I think it's amazing how how our instrument and music have forged these relationships and yeah. and, and I Doug and I've talked about this a lot when um when the teacher becomes the colleague and then the colleague becomes the friend or or in that in that zone and and it's you know it, it's just awesome man and, and and how and then these relationships grow and you know i wouldn't have met half the guys that i got to meet and study with without p being around especially and, and arnold too but it's the same type of thing man i mean doug you went through the, the whole tommy thing and then you know everything else right i mean it, from from moving out from the midwest to coming out to la i mean i mean it's the same thing with julian right i mean here you started with zach zach Raya, all those years ago and i remember on our show zach Raya, you had the same type of thing where you've got all these guys and i just you know uh, i wish more of us would would think about that more about where we come from why we come from where we come from why we play the music that we do play the music for and especially to, to, to piggyback on what Julian was start song, finding that that core, that that essence of of what really touches us and doing that as opposed to not doing, you know, I gotta go do this. I gotta go do this. And and oh, and Doug and I've talked about this a lot. The hardest thing in the world in the musical community, especially with gigging guys like us, is saying no. <laughs> no, it's it's the hardest thing in the freaking world man and and, yeah. when I, and when i turned 58 years ago i i was like i'm finally going to be able to say no you know and i would kick yeah. myself in the ass every time i still said yes and i didn't want to do it you know what i'm saying and it's like yeah. it, it is the because it's the kiss of death mm -hmm. no okay well, then you either don't want to do it or you don't need it. And then all of a sudden that starts spinning out of control, right? So, you know, I get it, man. And and, uh -huh. and Julian, I have ultimate respect for you, man, for dealing with the situation that you did and then actually going back and retraining your face to do the things that you wanted to do as opposed mm -hmm. to somebody else wanting to do. And, and mm -hmm. man... Man, that that's big country stuff right there, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. It's um, it's it's really, like I said, I opened up a lot of doors. Um, and and just kind of piggybacking on the, the whole no thing. I, I gotta, you never know what things lead where you this instrument will lead you, if you if you're open to possibility, right? And and experience, and and because I could say. Oh, let me try this klezmer thing, this klezmer music. You know, when I went to Boston, oh, this is cool. This is great. You know, 
and they still have to groove, you know. And then I'm I'm in with the Train Cousin band. It's like, oh wait, um, we're gonna do this um, this uh, fundraiser, and Yo 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 Ma's wife is running it. Oh, can you can you come meet Yo Yo Ma and teach him a couple tunes? We go to his house and sit down. I'm sitting in his home, the trombonist, the, the clarinetist, the leader, Glenn Dixon, and Stream, and of like the three of us and uh, and Maury, yeah, four of us, and and we're saying, man, yo yo, you know, you're doing all these commercials, you all these recordings, you're traveling the world. How do you do this? How do you do this? And he said, oh, I used to pump iron and work out all the time, but ultimately I learned to say no. So John, you know, it's, it comes back, you know, that keeps surfacing from the, the, the world class greats. And, and, you know, and you're saying it all comes back to us really listening to ourselves, even the people that we think just, they just do it at ease. And I, I'm thankful for the, where this, the journey has taken me because of the instrument. Amen, brother. You know? I'm hip. I mean, Zachariah, I think you're, you're a great example of that too, man. How many years yeah. at the San Francisco Opera? I mean, and, yeah. you keep, and you keep saying yes because it's still fun. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, I don't. I, I mean, knowing you now, man, I don't think you would do it unless it was fun. Oh, I make it fun. If it's not fun, I make it fun. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey Zachariah, do you, you you got any questions for Julian, man? Julian, you know, um, I, uh, my my question is is um, now that now that you've become my teacher, um, I, how do I say no <laughs> how do you say no yeah what's what's the process i mean it, 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 oh, you, you know what i'm saying because it's oh. like you say where is it going to take me now do i want to go there or not how do you say no well well, well, well part part of the thing that i i, I gleaned um that from yo yama as well is like you're a wonderful person and what you want everybody wants to be a, a piece of you and involved with you they love you. They love, they're saying, asking you, they, they will always be there. By saying no doesn't mean you're less of a person. That's They'll important. Always, right. That right there. You know? what, what you just said. Thank you. Yeah. That's why you're my teacher now. You're my teacher, <laughs> Julian. <laughs> it's it's that, uh, that, that loop, what do they call that loop, where you can't tell where the beginning came, because I got it from you. Mobius. What goes around comes around. Infinity. Uh, yeah, the Mobius yeah. strip, man. Yeah. Mobius strip. Yeah. yeah. Hey, That's Doug, it. you got you got something, man? I do. Um, you know, Julian, I, <clears throat> I was so impressed. You you forwarded your your resume as a because we didn't know you before today, and um, it's like, well, you were so generous with information, and one of the things you've been so involved in has been, for lack of a better term, I'll call it community engagement you know i i my guess was that your years in the corporate world made you uniquely well you know how to speak that language and you can navigate in that world that is so frustrating to most of us musicians i i see you on all these arts panels and councils and doing grant writing and you're really you're really changing the face of tomorrow well see that's that's the thing where you have a, a moment of adversity you find your strength. And, you know, I had to learn to survive. I learned my skill set and the knowledge of my music and the skills that I learned. And, you know, if you're open enough, there, there are opportunities come where they, they, they work together. They help each other. Um, and the thing about, um, I always thought as a tuba player, we're always having to be ambassadors for our instruments. We always say, why, you know, why the tuba doesn't play, you know, it doesn't do, it doesn't, plays low notes it's not glamorous but it is we know it is and we've been transforming that so we've always been having to explain to folks and so we had to we had to learn how to articulate and bring people into how we get into why we're so impassioned how we look at things so differently and so uh, and how do we engage people into something that they don't have no idea about so i always felt like i was always explaining and drawing and educating as a tuba player bringing people into the tuba world and then, you know, the whole corporate business and, um, you know, I, I, I could say I, I started a job just work outside of me just working in junior high. I needed to have money. <laughs> I love the sciences. I said, hey, I found a gig at the pet store, the animal company. I was working 
two hours after school every day and occasionally on the weekends since junior high school through high school. I've been working every single day. So you get this work ethic, you know, and, um, you know, dealing with people. Uh, it's in all, all our experiences, if you're pay, I think if you're paying attention to who you are and what you are, you find the setting. Somehow you find the groove sure. in life. And community engagement, someone saw me in front of, uh, I was doing uh, narrating, Peter and the Wolf, you know, and um, they say, hey, Julian, will you be our community engagement manager? Because you, you see how I was reaching out to the, the company, to the, the, the audience. And then I, I was working with the education um, director um, and um, we, uh, then she left, um, they merged the position. And next thing you know, I straddled these different worlds. And I'm being, especially a person of color. I can't stress that enough to be in the classical field. You know, there's, there's no one that helps you. Uh, there's not enough of us to help you how to manage that. You learn, you know, um, you, you know you, you, we stand out, you know, in this crowd. And so people, you have to learn how to, like, manage yourself. Some, some do it well, some don't. Some learn. And so when you're, like, you know, straddling these different worlds, you become savvy at it, you know, um, and then also as part of who I am as a person, you know, I've always been not, you know, a friendly person since junior high. I mean, it's, it's, some things you are who you are. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I look back at my junior high yearbook and it says, oh, you know how they go to the students who, who's most likely to succeed. And it's a Julian Dixon friendliest. Oh, 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 that's it. Uh oh, that's where I started. <clears throat> but yeah, you know, it's, it's all part of the same thing that community engagement, the panel work, it's about, you know, spreading the love, creating opportunities it's, for what I've gained. It's, you know. it's, it's just phenomenal. So, uh, John and I want to know when the next down in the valley is because we're getting in the car. Yeah, no oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> Thank you for, for saying that because. It's been tough, you know, it, it's been on, uh, on the shelf for a little bit because of the university, but um, Barton Cummings, yeah. uh, I can't stress enough uh, what a wonderful man he is. And I became close to him and, and his family when he passed. And I am the caretaker of um, his album collection and his book and his books in my studio. And, uh, and a couple, I, and one of his tubas, um, uh, next time down the valley, I'm saying it here, is going to be dedicated to him. As it should uh, be. And, uh, Beautiful. As it should be. As it should be. Uh, he's written, I'm, you know, I'm trying to prime the studio and the kids, you know, whether they're still in school with me or graduated. Uh, as we, we come back, you know, that's kind of a focus, like, okay, how do we get this going again? Uh, and, and Bill, and Zachariah, you were one of the uh, first uh, guests, uh, my guests, and when we got it going. Will uh, I be invited back? Is it possible to come back, do you think? Uh, it, it wouldn't be a festival without you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Because I mean, you're looking yeah, for a party. I need a party. Yeah, I know. Party. That's what I was going to say. You, you're picking all the fun, Zachariah. The, the, call, the California <laughs> promise. So That's my man. That's my man. <laughs> yeah. Down in the valley. Yeah, come on down and party. Yeah. Um, well, hey, it's, it's, yeah. You know, I, I hate to say this, but uh, we, we're kind of running short on time. No! Oh! I know. I know. <laughs> no! I know. On. Hey, man, we got, you know, uh, dude, you guys can talk, but, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to keep an audience. Hey, Zachariah, we're trying to keep an audience here. All right? <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. No, I, know. Good. I know. Good. I know. You're good. You're good, man. Uh, Julian, I can't thank you enough for your time today, man. And, and mm. I can't thank you enough for your story because there's mm. a lot of hope there, man. And, and, and I, I, once again, it was great meeting you today, man. I, and, yeah. you know, yeah. please, please call because uh, I'm going to I'm going to keep a hold of you, man, because I, I, I totally love where you're at, man. Um, mm -hmm. Doug, you got anything else, man? Thank you. Thank you so much. This you're just I love what you're doing up there. And as I okay. mentioned to you, you're you're in my old stomping grounds and it's. Boy, it's a lot better now than it was when I was growing up. So congratulations. You've really made the world a better place. Thank you. And I, I, need, to, I need to definitely thank our esteemed colleague, Mr. Zachariah Spellman, for, for jetting home. 
and, <laughs> and, and, and joining us for the last little bit. Zachary, it is just an absolute pleasure having you on the show every time, man. It's such a pleasure to see Julian here on the screen. I am so delighted. Oh. This was this was a dream come true. Oh, it's just awesome, uh -oh. guys. Hey, I want to thank everybody out there again for showing up today. I know you got a lot of choices in the world, and we're glad that you spent it with us yeah. today. Uh, we're going to be back again next Sunday at 3 p.m., guest pending right now. But we do have some guests, and we've got some really great ones coming up later this month in June. We have uh, Mr. Wayne Bergeron in two weeks, and then we have Mr. James Gordley. Uh, yes, we got him, Doug, on the, on the 20th. So we got okay. James, we got, and I'm really looking forward to this month. So everybody out there, uh, have a wonderful afternoon and also have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. And don't forget about those who have served. Because, yes. Um, that means a lot to me. And, and it should, I think it means, should mean a lot to everybody out there. Um, anyway, have a wonderful afternoon. Zachariah, Doug. Julian, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, we're going to take you out with a little two-bop. And peace out, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. From time to time, I dream that I'm a manatee Undulating underneath the sea Unshackled by the chains of idle vanity A modest manatee, that's me I look just like a chubby brown bananatee As I nose along the cozy ocean floor Immune from human folly and inanity That's why a manatee is such a happy herbivore I'm a manatee, I'm a manatee I'm every bit as wrinkled as my granity. No difference between my face and vanity. A noble manatee, that's me. With the dietary habits of a manatee, I never fail to lick my platter clean. I sprinkle seaweed on my raisin branity. The perfect manatee. Cuisine. With my wit, sophistication, and urbanity, I dignify my watery domain. No one near will ever hear me use profanity, because a manatee has his image to maintain. I'm a manatee, I'm a manatee. I keep my reputation spick and spanity. No difference between my face and vanity. A stately vanity, that's me. Encumbered by my lumbering giganity, I'm thought to be an ocean going brute. The least appealing creature on the planet. But to a manatee, I'm cute. I prefer my world of silence and of sanity. But my underwater friends don't all agree For whenever I am dreaming I'm a manatee Somewhere a manatee 